In the last video we looked at the Olivetti Multisumer 20, showing what it does and how to use it. I'll put a link in the description to that video. This time round I'll open up the machine to look at the mechanism inside and point out a few of the things that needed to be fixed before it would run again. The Olivetti machines have unusual methods of opening up the case. Previously I'd shown a hand-cranked Prima 20 which has a slightly different method, link in the description. But for this machine, looking under the front, there's this slot, and if I insert a screwdriver, I can slide the locking mechanism to the right, which releases the front of the case, and then the case just unhooks. However, when I got this machine, the locking mechanism, like everything else in the machine, was solid with old gummed up oil, so it took a bit of fresh oil and jiggling to get it moving again. The next challenge can be how to get the mechanism out of the bottom half of the case, although I was wise to this having done the hand crank machine before. There are some metal legs that push into rubber feet and should in theory just ease out. Like that. However, with a bit of rust on the legs and perishing as the rubber, they do tend to bond themselves together, so a little bit of patience is required. You don't want to break the case after all. And just to show exactly what I mean, these are the metal legs, which have a slightly flared end to hold them into the rubber feet protruding through the case. OK, on to the mechanism. It's fairly normal with all mechanical adding machines and calculators that the old oil and grease has become solid and sticky, causing the machine to seize up. In the case of the electric machines like this one, there's rarely any point applying electricity until you've got the mechanism relatively freed up. There's usually some way of turning the machine by hand. Initially I was using one finger on the motor end of the main drive shaft here and gripping this cam on the other end of the drive shaft with the other hand. However, this quickly got quite painful. So I made this high-tech manual driving device, which is just an off-cutter wood with two panel pins driven in at the correct distance to fit these two holes in the cam. I simply cut the heads off the panel pins once they were in the wood, and now if I press a button to release the mechanism, I can simply turn the machine by hand. Initially, of course, even the main drive shaft and everything attached to it was seized, and it's just a case of working through each part, feeling which parts are free to jiggle back and forth and which are stuck. Mostly to free components on these machines, I'll carry a bit of fresh oil on the tip of a screwdriver to the bearing I'm trying to free, and try to jiggle it enough to work the fresh oil into the bearing. More often than not, I'll use some heat, which really helps to soften the old oil. I nearly always use this hot air gun. These are sold for crafting and that kind of thing, but they're also brilliant for freeing up old machines like this, and also shrinking heat shrink tube. Anyway, having got the machine freed up enough to do a complete revolution after pressing the plus button, it was time to clear the register and try adding something. Still just turning the machine by hand, so I could feel if there was any unexpected resistance and deal with it. Normally pressing the total button will print the current total held in the register, then clear the register back to zero. But instead the machine just printed the total without clearing the register. And if I tried the subtotal button, it just printed a load of nines and an error. This turned out to be an issue with the cams at the back of the machine. When you press the total key, this cam follower, which I'd already freed up, should move across to the left hand side of this fatter cam. This allows the total held in the register to be transferred to the number wheels. The register is effectively at zero once the total has been transferred to the number wheels. Then, once the number has printed, the cam follower should fall into the cutout of the cam, allowing the number wheels to return without winding the total back into the register. However, pressing the total key only moved the cam follower onto the right hand side of the cam, the right hand side having no cutout, so as the number wheels return, the total is transferred back into the register. The right hand side of that cam should of course be the side for the subtotal, but pressing the subtotal button didn't even reach the cam, so all the number wheels just went up to their maximum value. 
With quite a bit of searching, the fault was tracked down to this lever in the middle of the machine, which had been bent at some point in time. It's this lever that indexes where the cam follower will move to when you press one of the controls. Once the lever was straightened, the cam system worked perfectly again. Next, it was time to look at the keyboard and number entry mechanism. Pressing a number should move the pin matrix one space to the left, or to the right as we're viewing it from the rear. You can see the top of the pin matrix just here. But it was stuck somewhere over towards the right. That was an easy enough fix. The pin matrix runs on this bar here, which had sticky dried oil all over it. Simply cleaning the old oil off, applying fresh oil and giving it a good old jiggle had it moving freely again. As with everything else I'm pointing out, there were far more sticky and seized parts, but it will vary from machine to machine, so I'm only showing the major bits. Having got everything seemingly freed off and working, it was time to try some simple addition before plugging the machine in. And as expected, it worked. Or at least it gave the correct answer some of the time. So next, it was time to plug the machine in. I'd already done some basic electrical safety checks and I knew we were good to go. So I plugged it in and pressed the plus button. Nothing. This wasn't such a surprise. It's fairly common for the contacts on the switch to get furred up over time. So I took the switch assembly off, which is this plastic assembly behind the motor, and cleaned the contacts. Once that was done, we were in business. Time to try adding something up. So I entered the fairly standard test of 123 plus 456 plus 789 plus 987 plus 654 plus 321, which should give the total of 3330. But instead it gave some other random four digit number. I tried multiple times, and rather than being an adding machine, it was more of a random number generator. Time to do a bit more diagnostics. Turning the machine slowly by hand, mostly, but not always, gave the correct result, but using it with electrical power more often than not generated a random answer. Eventually I located this spring-loaded bar right in the heart of the machine. It's a bit difficult to see, but it indexes the register gears and stops them from moving when the register isn't engaged with the number wheels and racks. One end of the bar was springing as it should be, but the other end was stuck, away from the register gears, allowing them to shake into random positions as the machine completed each cycle. This took quite a long time to free up, because access was terrible. Eventually I made up a narrow metal tube to allow me to direct hot air to the sticking pivot, and after a lot of persistence, it freed up and started moving as it should do. So now I'll quickly describe how the mechanism operates, and after that we can sit back and enjoy watching it running without me talking over the top. Pressing one of the number keys extends one of the pins on the pin matrix, which sits in the middle of the machine. If I press one with a screwdriver, you should see the pin pop out. The top of the pin matrix is the high numbers, with the lower ones at the bottom. Once you've entered your number and you press the plus button, this set of spring-loaded levers are released. The levers are connected to the number wheels and will move upwards until their progress is halted by the extended pins on the pin matrix. I've entered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so you should see the levers move progressively further upwards across the width of the matrix. The levers are also connected to some toothed racks. After the number has printed, the register gears are moved into contact with these toothed racks, and as the levers return to their rest position, the number is transferred to the register gears. The register has all the mechanism for carrying numbers, but it's so deep inside the machine, I can't really demonstrate that. But having stripped off the printing assembly, you can see a little bit of the register in operation here as I add a number in. Pressing the subtotal or total key more or less reverses this operation. The register is moved into contact with the racks, and the levers will extend upwards as far as the number held in the register allows. And at the point of printing, the number held in the register is at zero. 
If you've pressed the subtotal, the register remains in contact with the toothed racks as they lower, transferring the number back into the register. But if you've pressed the total key, the register is moved away from the racks and is therefore cleared to zero. The addition of the multiplication function would have given the designers a bit of a headache to incorporate into an already complicated mechanism, because the machine now needs to store an additional number as the multiplier before entering the second number or multiplicand. So if I enter 12345 and press the times key, and then crank the machine by hand, and now flip the machine upside down, You can see the multiplier forming the chevron pattern on this set of racks here at the back of the machine. I'll flip the machine back over and enter the second number. I'll go for two and then I'll press the equals key and start cranking the machine. You should see this little finger here moving the first rack backwards one notch at a time until the rack is fully back and then it will move on to the next column and so on. This process will continue until all the racks are back in their home position and the machine prints the result. Something I hadn't spotted when I filmed the demo video for this machine is that after you've done a multiplication, the result is not only printed, but it's also added back into the multiplier section, so you can carry on multiplying that result. So if I just plug the machine back in and enter 2, and then press the times key, and then enter 347023, and press the equals key, we get the answer of 694046. Now all I have to do to multiply that answer is type in the next number, we'll go for 4, and press equals again. And we get the answer of 277-6184. And then one final time, I'll multiply that result by 2 and press equals. And we're left with the result of 555-2368. Spooky, isn't it? Anyway, that's enough talking. I'll now shut up for a bit and show the machine doing various calculations without the covers on. Ok, I think that will do for this video. If you've not seen the full demo video of this machine, I'll put a link down in the description and on screen about now. I'll also put a link to my playlist of old calculator videos, in case you're interested in other fascinating machines like this. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to click on the bell icon so you get notifications when future videos are released. 
that's it for now, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.